In this tutorial, we're going to look at different methods for creating something like this when we have a vacuole or some sort of empty space moving through a cross section. So you can imagine a vacuole moving through cytoplasm or through some sort of simplified cell membrane. So if we look in Maya here, I'm going to talk about three different ways of doing this. So I'll just play this through a little bit. One of them we won't be able to see without rendering. So one, we're using a sculpt deformer where it is pushing in the geometry here and then parenting our payload to it. This one is using something called Clip Geo. So this is a shading solution. So we can only see this when we render. So we can see that this is happening as a post-process. Um, it's not actually affecting the geometry. It's just rendering the geometry as if this part of the cube is clipped away. And we also have rounded corners here that we're also going to do using uh, a shading solution. And then this one over here is using a Boolean. So just having a sphere cut away part of this cube. And then I'm doing something extra here. I'm creating a sort of a, the cell membrane kind of being pinched off and surrounding the vacuole. So you can kind of adapt this method if it was useful. Okay, so let's recreate this from scratch. And I think the most straightforward one is the Boolean. So we'll start with that one. So I've just got this set up here and I'm going to animate this sphere moving. Select these two objects and make a Boolean from them. I'm gonna do it while they're intersected just so we can see the results. And um, so if we go to our modeling area and Booleans, and I think we want to do, depends which order I select them in and I can never remember. So it did the wrong direction. So we can take this and just reorder them. So I did an intersection A to B or B to A. Um, and you can change that here as well after the fact. And it's showing the wireframe of the previous model for the sphere end of the cube too, but it's being blocked by a newly generated mesh, this polysurface one. So I'll rename this demo Boolean. And so if we play the animation now, Right, so we just see a cutout. I'm gonna hide the original sphere and the original cube. Right, so we just get something like that. So it's a little rough looking here, but to fix that, I would just have to make a sphere that had more divisions in it originally, but I'm also going to try and hide this as well. Now, a couple things to consider. If I hit three on the keyboard, it will smooth at the edge and we get kind of a bevel there, but you'll see it's a little bit janky. It's kind of hard to tell here, but it's pinched a little bit here. Something like this, it could work doing it this way. Um, I'm just going to hit one on my keyboard to go out of that. So something I'm going to try instead is to assign a new material to this object. And we'll just use the AI standard surface. And we're going to add a node called AI round corners. And this is a way to fake beveling that happens at the shader level. We just take AI round corners and take the out value and connect it to normal camera. And then we can set the radius of the corner that is created. So let's grab our render view because we can only see this in the render. Okay, so let's just move this out of the way. So you can see it's trying to make it look as if the corner is rounded here. And if I change the radius value, 
and we'll make it try and look rounder. If you make this too high, then the effect kind of falls apart because it's going beyond the threshold of the curve and you'll start to get weird artifacting. So you have to keep the value kind of low. You can increase the samples to be better quality, but I'm not sure how much you'll notice the difference. Um, if we go back to the sphere that we are using for the Boolean, so let's say we want to add an object that is moving through here. So just create a torus and I'll just make it a child of this sphere. Just middle mouse drag it. So now when we play the animation, we'll cut it out and move up there and you can add some extra animation to the torus inside. Okay, so now what about the other thing that I showed where we see the line forming around the edge of the cut? Okay, so this is slightly obscure, but if we take this original sphere that we're using for the Boolean and then take the original cube that we're using for the Boolean, not the output one, but the original one that's hidden right now, I'll just unhide it. I'm going to take the torus out of here temporarily because I don't want it involved in my selections. So I'll take the these things better. Okay, so the original cube, not the output boolean, and the original sphere. And I don't know where to find this anymore in the um, the menus, but if you search for add new tune outline in the in the search bar here, just select that having both of these things selected and add that. And you'll see that it adds a tune outline. So this is how you used to do tune shader in Maya before we had Arnold, although it's still in here. And what this is trying to do is to create a paint effects curve going around different parts of the, of the objects. So there's a lot to look at here, but it's doing borders on open edges. We don't want it on crease lines. We do want it on intersection lines, and that's really only where we want it, where the, the sphere and the cube are intersecting. And the profile, we want that to be, take the profile line width down to zero, so that's the part on the outer edge. And that just leaves us with an intersection line, and we can turn up the value. Oops, that's the wrong one. The intersection line here, so we can turn up this value. And if we scrub down, then where these two things intersect, we get this result. Now, the limitation here is if we open up the render view, that is very interesting. Um, it's not rendering. I'm not sure where this is coming from. I think I may have unhidden the cube we probably want to hide that. But at any rate, that thing is not rendering. It's because Arnold can't render paint effects. So we have to select the paint effects tune and go to modify, convert, paint effects to polygons. And now it will render it. And let's just hide those other things now. Yeah, so those were, for some reason, casting a light in the scene. And I'm going to hide my paint effects tune because it created this new mesh group here. And that's this thing. It's got a piece of geometry in here, and we can add a shader to that. Um, one thing we want to do, go to back to paint effects tune shape. And down here under line resampling, we just look at it here, turn on resample intersection. And if we select this now, we'll get cleaner geometry. Okay, and we can hit three on the keyboard to smooth it out. Um, 
Can we turn, yeah, we can also turn on output quads under mesh output here. Let's look at clip geo now. We'll just assign, I'm going to assign the same material that I just created, which I called something demo cube shader. And then on the sphere that's intersecting, we're going to assign a new material. And this one is called AI clip geo. And just by doing that, if we render, we'll see that it cuts out a nice hole in here. So you can see how easy this is. And there's actually no hole in the geometry. So this could be perfectly flat geometry without all these divisions, and it would still work well. So if I take this and move it down, you can see we get a nice cutout throughout the whole thing. Put it inside and we'll make it a child of this. We'll call this clip sphere. Okay, so now if we render, you'll notice there's something weird going on here. And it's because this torus is entirely inside the sphere and it's gonna clip anything in the scene. So now that I start to move it partly out and actually mostly out, I think, then it starts to correct itself. So we've got to do one thing. We've got to tell Clip Geo to ignore this torus and to not clip it, right? So this we get this kind of error when we get overlapping things like this. So if we go into the Clip Geo node, there are trace sets here. And if we type something like uh, Clip, that's just the name of the trace set it's going to look for in other objects. So if I open up the torus and go to the Arnold tab in the shape node and in the trace sets here under visibility, type the same thing. If we render now, we get this kind of interesting effect. So let's just update the full scene and it's still doing the same thing. So if we go back to the AI clip geo node and turn off inclusive, then it should not um, include the sphere, pardon me, the torus. We are getting a strange kind of artifact here. I'm not sure why. Just pulling this out a little bit more to try and hide that. But I have noticed this when you have um, intersecting objects that it can cause some problems, like this object entirely inside of the sphere. So we just have to kind of adapt and make some changes so it works. A pretty quick and easy animation for something like this and it gives the impression that it's pushing through. Okay, so the last one we're going to do is using a Sculpt Deformer. And a Sculpt Deformer is an old thing that's been around Maya for years. Um, so if we go to Deform Sculpt, oops, Deform Sculpt, and I'm gonna reset the settings, center within selection, Create. You'll see two things are created, Sculptor 2, which is this sphere, and the Sculptor Stretch Origin. So if I move the Sculptor out, it's trying to deform the geometry. But it has to do with the position of that Sculpt Locator 2. So the settings that I found work for this is if we leave the mode at stretch, inside mode to even, then we can play around with maximum displacement and the drop off distance. I'm just gonna make the locator, the sculpt stretch origin, a child of the sculptor. And so if I move them together, we can get something like this. You can see it's not exactly perfect. We get this kind of uh, deformed edge we hit three on the keyboard, it will kind of smooth that out a little bit. And it might be 
good enough for what you're trying to do. If we move the whole thing in, we can change the effect a little bit. So now that it's pushed in a little bit further, we can play around with the maximum displacement and then the drop-off distance. And this will also respond to the scale of the sculptor object itself. So you can play around with this to get the effect that you want. And it's kind of a nice natural looking sort of effect. And if we take another payload object, just scale this down and I can make it a child of the sculptor object. And so when we animate this going up, we can get something just like that. You can play around with the sculptor and see what else it can do. There's flip mode, so you can get a slightly different kind of effect, which actually works pretty well too. It's not pushing it in as far. So it's flip mode because once you get past a certain point, it flips around the other way. But this is kind of an interesting method for doing that kind of animation as well. Uh, and then there's project mode, which I don't think will do what we want to do here. So either stretch or flip. Stretch is kind of doing exactly what we want here. And there you go. So these are three different ways to make a cross-section cutout of an object moving through another object. Anyway, I hope you find this helpful and uh, good luck.